In the late 1950s and early 60s a wave of independence was sweeping across the African continent. Several African countries were now becoming autonomous and self-governed, figures like Leopold C. de Senga, Kwame Kruma, Jomo Kenyatta and so many others took the helm of power. These leaders no doubt wanted the prosperity and development of their respective countries, however once some of these leaders got a taste of power, they didn't want to let go, Leopold Cedar held power for over two decades others like Kenneth Conda and Robert Mugabe held it for even longer. In this video, we're going to look at the motivations behind some of these leaders holding power for so long, their dealings as well as their respective legacies. So stay tuned also please take a second to hit that like button as well as subscribe so more people can see this. At number 25 it's Mohammed Ould Abdel Aziz of Mauritania, 10 years and 1 month. Mohammed Ould Abdel Aziz seized control in an armed coup in 2008 in which he installed himself as interim leader. In 2009, he won the presidential election and emerged the country's elected leader, his ascension to power occurred at a moment of political unrest in Mauritania. One of Abdel Aziz's most notable accomplishments was his ability to provide security and stability to Mauritania during his tenure. His administration intensified counter-terrorism measures, notably in the Sahel region, and attempted to prevent the expansion of extremist groups inside the country. His leadership helped Mauritania avoid the political turbulent conditions that some neighboring countries experienced. The administration of Abdel Aziz pursued economic reforms aimed at increasing Mauritania's liquidity and lowering poverty. Among these measures were efforts to move the economy away from its dependence on mining and fishing. In addition, his administration sought foreign investment and collaborations to spur economic growth. Abdel Aziz was chastised for constitutional amendments that enabled him to run for a third term. These amendments provoked protests and highlighted concerns about the consolidation of power, including a referendum in 2017. These reforms, critics claimed, weakened democratic values and institutions. Following elections in 2019, Abdel Aziz stood aside as president in accordance with constitutional term restrictions. This transition was a watershed point in Mauritanian politics since it displayed a commitment to democratic values and peaceful power transfer. 24. Mohamedou Isufu of Niger, 10 years and 2 months Mohamedou Isufu was president of Niger from 2011 until 2021. During his presidency, one of his key accomplishments was to keep Niger peaceful and stable. He led the country through a number of security issues, including threats from extremist organizations such as Boko Haram and Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. His administration tried to enhance Niger's security forces and collaborated with foreign allies in the Sahel region to battle terrorism. Isufu's administration was chastised for corruption and poor governance. Some critics claimed that corruption remained a problem and that openness and accountability needed to be improved. Furthermore, civil society organizations accused the administration of limiting press freedom and stifling political dissent. 23. Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya, 10 years and 9 months Uhuru Kenyatta was sworn in as Kenya's fourth president on April 9, 2013, following a closely contested presidential election in March of that year. He was elected as the Jubilee Alliance's candidate, defeating his primary competitor, Rela Odinga. His triumph was historic in the sense that he was the first sitting president to be indicted by the International Criminal Court prior to assuming office. The International Criminal Court indicted him with crimes against humanity in connection with his suspected role in post-election violence in 2007-2008. Kenyatta's election, however, was distinguished by more than just legal obstacles, it also marked a fundamental political shift in Kenya. Throughout Kenyatta's leadership, corruption has been a continuous issue. Critics believe that not enough has been done to combat high-level corruption, and several significant corruption scandals have sprung out under his presidency. Cases such as the NYS scandal and the Chicken Gate scandal have garnered public attention and criticism. While Kenya's economy grew during Kenyatta's administration, the country had ongoing economic issues, such as unemployment and poverty. 
Critics said that economic gains were not dispersed equally, leaving many Kenyans behind. 22. Alpha Conde of Guinea, 11 years and 4 months. On December 21, 2010, Alpha Conde was elected president of Guinea after winning the country's first democratic presidential election since its independence from France in 1958. Despite being elected democratically, Conde's administration was criticized for its growing authoritarian tendencies. His government was accused of cracking down on political opposition, limiting press freedom, and crushing dissent over time. Protests and dissenting voices were suppressed by the administration, according to critics. Guinea is endowed with natural resources such as bauxite and iron ore, but the country has suffered economic issues throughout Conde's leadership. Critics cited difficulties such as corruption, resource mismanagement, and the slow pace of economic progress. Despite its abundant natural resources, poverty persisted. 21. Alassane Ouattara of Côte d'Ivoire, 12 years and 8 months. Alassane Ouattara took office in 2011. His victory came after a period of unrest and bloodshed in Côte d'Ivoire as a result of the disputed 2010 presidential election. His win was globally recognized, but it occurred after months of post-election violence and a political stalemate with the incumbent, Loan Bagbo. One of Ouattara's most credible efforts is the considerable economic boom that Côte d'Ivoire achieved during his presidency. He enacted economic reforms, drew international investment, and pushed for infrastructural development. The country's economy grew at one of the quickest rates in Africa. The presidency of Ouattara marked a period of relative political stability in Côte d'Ivoire. His victory in 2010 brought an end to a protracted political crisis and a brief civil conflict, and he prioritized reconciliation efforts to repair the country's divisions. 20. Sam Nujoma of Namibia, 15 years and one month. Sam Nujoma, Namibia's founding president, he was instrumental in the country's march to independence and served as its first president. When Namibia gained independence from South African administration on March 21, 1990, Sam Nujoma took power. His leadership was the culmination of decades of resistance to colonialism and apartheid. Nujoma was a significant leader in Namibia's independence struggle and a founding member of the South West Africa People's Organization, which was instrumental in the liberation campaign. Nujoma's presidency was marked by strong centralized authority, and some viewed his leadership style as authoritarian. During his presidency, his government maintained strict control over the media and political opposition, and there were charges of human rights violations. During Nujoma's presidency, Namibia had economic issues such as high unemployment and income inequality. Critics claim that economic policies did not go far enough to solve these challenges. 19. P. N. Karenziza of Burundi 15 years and 9 months After a period of transition following Burundi's long and deadly civil war, P. N. Karenziza took the presidency in August 2005. His election was a watershed moment in Burundi's peace and reconciliation process. Karenziza was a former rebel leader and Hutu ethnic group member who had been at odds with the Tutsi-dominated military and political establishment for years. His election was part of a negotiated peace pact aimed at ending ethnic bloodshed and civil conflict in Burundi. The administration of Karenziza was condemned for its authoritarian inclinations and suppression of political dissent. His administration has been accused of repressing opposition parties, independent media, and civil society organizations. This repression became more severe during his third term, causing a huge political crisis in Burundi. 18. Juvenile Habirimina of Rwanda, 17 years and 5 months. Habirimina became president of Rwanda on October 5, 1973, following a military coup that ousted President Gregoire Kaibanda. This coup was led by a group of Tutsi officers within the Rwandan military. The early years of Habirimina's presidency were distinguished by considerable political stability. He was noted for promoting an ethnic reconciliation agenda in order to reduce ethnic tensions between the majority Hutu and minority Tutsi populations. These contradictions, however, 
remained underlying concerns throughout Rwandan society. Despite efforts to foster peace, ethnic hostilities remained prevalent during Habyarimana's presidency. The ethnic split between Hutus and Tutsis remained a source of contention, with reports of Tutsi discrimination in various parts of Rwandan life. 17. Jerry Rawlings of Ghana, 19 years and 2 months. Rawlings took power in Ghana in a military coup on December 31, 1981. He launched an earlier coup on December 31, 1981, in which he deposed the Hila Lim and government. During his reign, there were several charges of human rights violations, including extrajudicial executions, disappearances, and torture of political opponents and detractors. His regime was accused of brutally suppressing dissent. Rawlings' reign was marked by authoritarianism. After Ghana's transition to multi-party democracy, he reigned both as a military leader and as a civilian president. Critics said that his rule restricted political and press freedoms. 16. Leopold C. De Senger of Senegal 20 years and 7 months on September 6, 1960, following Senegal's independence from French colonial administration, Leopold Cide Senga became the country's first president. Senegal obtained independence as part of the Mali Federation, but soon left, becoming a distinct country. Senga's intellectualism and contributions to literature and philosophy were warmly praised. He was a well-known poet and philosopher who advocated for negritude, a literary and ideological movement that valued African identity, culture, and legacy. Senga was a proponent of Pan-Africanism and a leader in the Pan-African movement. He collaborated closely with other African leaders to promote African unity and collaboration. 15. Ismail Omar Gele of Djibouti, 22 years and 7 months. In April 1999, Ismail Omar Gele replaced his uncle, Hossein Gaul Abtidan, as president of Djibouti. This was Djibouti's first peaceful transfer of power since its independence from France in 1977, and it went pretty smoothly. Gele's presidency has been marked by political stability in Djibouti, a country rife with violence and upheaval. This stability has attracted foreign investment and military sites, helping Djibouti's economy thrive. Djibouti's strategic location on the Red Sea coast makes it valuable for international military operations, such as hosting military sites for countries such as the United States, France, China, and Japan. Gele has used his position to attract foreign investment and help. 14. Mokhtar Old Dada of Mauritania, 24 years and one month. When Mauritania obtained independence from France on November 28, 1960, Mokhtar Old Dada became the country's first president. He was the country's first head of state, ushering in a new era for Mauritania. One of the most serious complaints leveled at Dada during his presidency was his management of ethnic conflicts within Mauritania. The country's population is diverse, with ethnic groupings ranging from Arab Berbers to Black Africans. Dada's government has been accused of favoring Arab Berber groups, causing tensions and confrontations with black African people, particularly the Fulani and Sonink. 13. Blaise Compare of Burkina Faso, 27 years and one month. Blaise Compare seized power on October 15, 1987, following a military coup that deposed then President Thomas Sankara. Sankara was Compare's close friend and ally, but he was also perceived as becoming more extreme, and their relationship worsened. Compare's role in the coup constituted a watershed moment in Burkina Faso's history. His most serious accusation is that he was involved in the assassination of his close friend and then President Thomas Sankara. Sankara's killing in the coup that brought Compare to power in 1987 is still a source of contention and criticism. Many believe Compare was essential to the preparation and execution of the coup that resulted in Sankara's death. 12. Kenneth Konda of Zambia, 27 years and one month. Kenneth Konda was a key figure in Zambia's fight for independence from British colonial authority. He was a founding member of the Northern Rhodesian African National Congress and, later, the United National Independence Party. 
Kona pursued an African socialist agenda, nationalizing vital businesses like as copper mining, which was the backbone of Zambia's economy. The goal was to reduce economic disparity and ensure that the country's riches benefited its population. During the Cold War, Konda followed a non-aligned foreign policy, maintaining connections with both Western and Eastern Bloc countries. He was involved in regional diplomacy and backed Southern African liberation organizations such as the African National Congress in South Africa. Konda initially ruled Zambia as a one-party state under UNIP. However, in response to growing domestic and international pressure, he allowed multi-party elections in 1991. He was defeated in the presidential election by Frederick Chiluba, marking a peaceful transition of power. 11. Habib Bogwiba of Tunisia, 27 years and one month. Tunisia had been a French protectorate since the early 20th century, and Bogwiba was a key figure in the fight for independence. He had led the neo dest Aupart PSD in advocating for Tunisian self-determination and sovereignty. In 1956, Tunisia gained independence from French colonial rule and Bogwiba became the prime minister. His political career had been marked by his commitment to achieving Tunisian independence and asserting Arab and Tunisian identity. Over time, Bogwiba's regime became increasingly authoritarian. He centralized power in his own hands, limited political freedoms, and suppressed opposition parties. The PSD dominated the political landscape, and political pluralism was restricted. Human rights violations occurred throughout Bogwiba's reign, including crackdowns on political dissent and limits on press freedom. His government's record on human rights was scrutinized by the international community. 10. Isaias Afwaki of Eritrea 29 years and one month Isaias Afwaki played a pivotal role in the struggle for Eritrean independence from Ethiopia, which was achieved in 1991. Eritrea officially declared its independence on May 24, 1993, and Isaias Afwaki became the country's first president. Eritrea is frequently referred to as one of the world's most restrictive countries. With no elections or political pluralism, Isaias Afwaki has maintained a firm grip on power. The country has not held national elections since its independence, and the 1997 constitution has never been enacted. 9. Paul Kagame of Rwanda 29 years and 7 months Kagame was instrumental in ending the Rwandan genocide in 1994, which killed an estimated 800,000 ethnic Tutsis and moderate Hutus. Kagame's army conquered Kigali, the capital, as leader of the Rwandan Patriotic Front, effectively ending the genocide. Following the genocide, Kagome served as Rwanda's transitional government's vice president and minister of defense. During this time, he contributed to the country's stabilization and the beginning of a process of national reconciliation. The transitional assembly chose Paul Kagome as president of Rwanda in 2000. He went on to win many presidential elections, including those in 2003, 2010, and 2017. According to critics, Kagame's regime is authoritarian, with few political liberties and restrictions on opposition groups and the media. Political opposition and official criticism are frequently met with serious repercussions. Rwanda has been accused of human rights violations, including political persecution, extrajudicial killings, and limits on free expression. Some opposition figures and journalists have been arrested or forced to flee the country. Rwanda's independent media has had hurdles, with some critical journalists repressed or pushed into exile. The media landscape in the country is frequently regarded as closely controlled by the government. 8. Idris Deve of Chad 30 years and 8 months Deve, a former military officer in Hissin Habrias government, launched an uprising against Habrias regime and conquered Injumena in December 1990, and Habra escaped into exile. This effectively ended Habrias' violent and totalitarian leadership. His ascent to power restored some calm to Chad, a country that had been riven by turmoil and civil violence for decades. His government was successful in uniting various rebel groups and bringing relative peace to the country. His reign was marked by authoritarianism. 
He wielded enormous influence, and political dissent was frequently suppressed. Critics claim that he prevented a really competitive political scene. Deva won multiple elections during his time in office, but these elections were often criticized for irregularities and lack of transparency. Opposition figures and parties sometimes faced harassment and restrictions. 7. Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe 37 years and one month Robert Mugabe was a key figure in Zimbabwe's struggle for independence from British colonial authority. He had an important role in the Zimbabwe African National Union and its armed component, the Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army. Zimbabwe obtained independence from Britain in 1980 after a protracted liberation war. Robert Mugabe was a key figure in the Zimbabwe African National Union and its armed wing, the Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army. Zimbabwe gained independence from Britain in 1980, and Mugabe became the country's first prime minister in April 1980. Mugabe's government has been accused of various human rights violations, including political violence, dissent repression, and intimidation of opposition members and civil society activists. During his reign, elections were frequently marred by anomalies and charges of rigging. Mugabe's government has been accused of various human rights violations, including political violence, dissent repression, and intimidation of opposition members and civil society activists. 6. Jose Eduardo dos Santos of Angola 38 years and 9 months Jose Eduardo dos Santos became president of Angola on September 21, 1979, following the unexpected death of the country's first president, Agostino Neto. Dos Santos was vice president at the time and was chosen by the ruling People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola to succeed Neto. Dos Santos took over a country in the grip of a horrific civil war, with the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola government receiving help from the Soviet Union and Cuba, and the rebel group UNITA obtaining support from the United States and South Africa. The battle lasted until 2002, fueled by Cold War politics and competitiveness for Angola's huge natural resources. Dos Santos concentrated on post-war reconstruction, national healing, and economic stability after the civil war concluded in 2002. During his administration, Angola, one of Africa's leading oil producers, saw tremendous economic growth, fueled by oil exports. 5. Yoweri Museveni of Uganda 40 years and 10 months Museveni rose to power as the leader of the National Resistance Army, a guerrilla organization that launched a five-year insurgency against President Milton Obote's regime. In January 1986, his army took Kampala, Uganda's capital, ushering him into power. Museveni's presidency originally restored calm to Uganda, which had endured years of political turbulence, including Idi Amin's leadership and the civil war during Obote's regimes. His administration prioritized post-war recovery, infrastructure restoration, and economic reforms. He implemented economic liberalization measures that encouraged international investment and growth. Privatization, market reforms, and private sector support were among the policies implemented. Despite initial positive developments, Museveni's rule has faced criticism for increasingly authoritarian tendencies. He has been accused of stifling political opposition and extending his time in power through constitutional amendments. 4. Omar Bongo Ondimba of Gabon 42 years and one month Omar Bongo Ondimba came to power on February 2, 1967, following the death of Gabon's first president, Leon Mba. Bongo, who had served in various government positions, including as Minister of Foreign Affairs, was appointed as Prime Minister under MBA's presidency. In 1968, Bongo initiated a constitutional amendment that effectively abolished the office of the president and established a one-party state. He became the president of the single-party state, marking the beginning of his long rule. While Bongo's rule brought stability, it was also criticized for its authoritarian nature. Political opposition was limited, and the ruling Gabonese Democratic Party dominated the political landscape. Bongo was accused of corruption and embezzlement, as well as having gained enormous riches through Gabon's oil resources. 
His relatives had important roles in government and industry. Bongo was accused of corruption and embezzlement, as well as having gained enormous riches through Gabon's oil resources. His relatives had important roles in government and industry. 3. Paul Bia of Cameroon 42 years and 8 months Paul Bia began his political career in the 1960s, serving in numerous government roles, including Secretary General of the Presidency under President Omadou Ahijo. Following President Omadou Ahijo's surprise resignation in November 1982, Bia took over. Bia became Cameroon's second president and has retained the office ever since. The presidency of Paul Bia is one of the longest in African history. He has ruled for numerous decades, which has resulted in both stability and criticism. Allegations of authoritarianism, human rights violations, and a lack of political pluralism have dogged Bia's administration. His government has been chastised for repressing dissent and curtailing freedoms. The Cameroon People's Democratic Movement has maintained a tight grip on power during Bia's leadership, winning multiple elections despite claims of irregularities. 2. Teodoro Obion Gamer Umbasogo of Equatorial Guinea 44 years and 5 months Teodoro Obion Gamer Umbasogo was born in Ekokomesangui, Equatorial Guinea, on June 5, 1942. He had a military career before becoming president, ascending through the ranks. Obiang took power in an August 1979 coup that deposed his uncle, the country's first president, Francisco Mokas Ndema. The violent and autocratic dictatorship of Mokas had thrown the country into turmoil and economic disaster. The government has faced international criticism for its human rights record, including allegations of torture, arbitrary detentions, and restrictions on civil liberties. Equatorial Guinea has maintained diplomatic relations with various countries and international organizations. Its oil wealth has given it influence in regional and international affairs. And at number one, Denis Sassou and Gesso of the Republic of the Congo, 46 years and three months. Sassou and Gesso first came to power in 1979 after leading a coup that ousted President Joachim Yombayopengo. He served as president until 1992 when he lost in the country's first multi-party presidential elections. After losing the 1992 elections, Sassou and Gesso led a rebel group in a civil war that lasted from 1997 to 1999. He eventually overthrew President Pascal Lasuba and returned to power. Since then, he has been re-elected in several controversial elections, most notably in 2002, 2009, and 2016. Critics have accused Sassou and Gesso of maintaining an authoritarian grip on power, limiting political pluralism, and suppressing opposition voices. They argue that he has undermined democratic institutions and processes to remain in power. Human rights organizations and observers have documented allegations of human rights abuses, including extrajudicial killings, torture, and political repression, during his tenure in office. Thanks for watching until the end. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe as it enables our content to reach a wider audience. Catch you guys in the next one.